If you like movies like Dazed and Confused, That Thing You Do, or Mall Rats, this video is for you. Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Kier, and this is what to watch this weekend. <laughs> All right, so last week we were a little bit dark and scary with Gretel and Hansel, but this week I want to lighten things up with a lovely comedy drama that is nostalgic to my childhood and still a classic in my eyes, Empire Records. Empire Records follows the story of a beloved local record store in the 1990s in a small Delaware town whose owner and employees all have their own individual struggles to work through while unknowingly being at risk of losing their business. This movie is like a blend of like Kevin Smith clerks but with like a way bigger cast and budget and a little bit of like Caddyshack and as well like a little bit of Say Anything maybe. There's like some love, a lot of comedy, a lot of misadventure. It's just overall a very, very wonderful vibe to the film. We get a huge ensemble cast and each of them plays their own part in the overall reason why this movie is so special to me to this day. Now usually on the show we don't do this but for this movie I think it's important. Let's take a quick minute and meet our characters. This is Joe played by Anthony LaPaglia. Joe is the owner of Empire Records and at the moment the only person that knows the business is going under. This is Rex Manning, played by Maxwell Caulfield. He is a fictional pop singer who is crucial to the movie in that he is visiting the record store for an autograph signing and this is what the store hopes will bring enough business to save it from going under. There's such a funny ongoing bit in the movie uh, called, they call it Rex Manning Day and every time something bad is happening somebody's like, oh, not on Rex Manning Day. It's it's really funny. This is Lucas, played by Rory Cochran, who you might recognize from movies like Oculus. He's a wise and kind of wax poetic soul who eventually discovers that the store is going under and gambles away all of its money trying to redeem it. This is AJ, played by Johnny Whitworth, and he's kind of your tortured artist, hopeless romantic type who's kind of sulking throughout the whole movie because he's unsure about his future, and he's also in love with his co-worker Corey, played by Liv Tyler. Corey is also thinking about her future as she feels pressured from her parents to go to a good college and get a good degree. Corey's drive and motivation to appease her parents and get into a good school leads her to develop a dependency on speed in order to stay up all night studying, and this becomes kind of a catalyst for her big arc in the movie. Then we get Deb, played by Robin Tunney, and she is your grungy, rude, angsty teen who does not give a f what you think. She's one of my favorite characters in the movie. Her kind of witty retorts and her hatred for Renee Zellweger's character, Gina, are really two things in this movie that I genuinely can't get enough of. Gina comes off as your seemingly carefree, doesn't care about anything popular Heather type. However, you do discover throughout the course of the film that she's got her own internal struggle as she doesn't feel like she's as good as her friends and she's afraid that they'll move on and forget all about her. Then we have Ethan Embry as Mark. Mark is the lovable goofball who just wants to have a good time with his friends and will do anything, and I mean anything, to save the store. All right, so those are really our main characters in the movie. Now, there are a lot of people that come and go. There's one character that I wish I could mention, but I really think it works better if you just see the movie. So when Lucas is closing the store one night, he discovers that the store is in financial shambles and decides to take all of the earnings that the store has made and gamble it in Atlantic City trying to double it so he can save the store. As a result, he ends up losing all of the store's money and thus setting it back even further from being salvaged at all. It's actually really funny. He pretty much loses it right away, but the confidence he has before he loses it is so good. It's worth watching just for that. Lucas, of course, doesn't tell Joe. However, Joe does find out later in the movie and hides the tragic news from the other employees. This movie has a quality that I love in movies, and that is that it takes place in one day. It's like a 24 hour span you get these characters and a bunch of characters all with their own struggles and they wake up as broken and hopeless and jaded people but by the end of the movie they're hopeful and they're confident in their futures and they're feeling good about something that they did together it's just it's it's beautiful and funny and i love when things are beautiful and funny okay and seeing as everybody has their own things going on most of the people in this movie are so blinded by their own individual struggles that they don't figure out that they're all at risk of something much much worse losing their jobs this is really a story about a handful of kids learning to accept that their futures are not fully in their control 
They all have their issues and that's what makes this movie work. You're not just following the story of a dying business. You see what each employee is going through and how that struggle affects their ability to move forward in life. This is one of those movies that you can just kind of put on and you think you're just going to have it on in the background, but you find yourself completely drawn into what's happening, no matter how many times you've seen it. And that is because the cast brings their A game. I mean, this movie's performances are just incredible. So underrated. I never hear people talking about it, and it legitimately bothers me. I love that all of the comedy, drama, and misadventure takes place in a single day, like I mentioned. I mean, these characters are genuinely different people over the course of 24 hours because of one thing that happens. And I think it's so special that we get to see that and they pull it off so well in the performances. But can this cast of misfits put their differences aside, solve their individual issues, and come together to solve the one looming threat that affects all of them, losing their store? Well, I know the answer to that question. And if you want the answer to that question, you can find out this weekend by watching Empire Records. As well, guys, if you enjoyed this video, please do drop a like, and I hope you'll consider subscribing. This is a new channel and it would help me out a lot. Also, if you've seen Empire Records or if you haven't seen Empire Records and this video has kind of inspired you to do so, let me know that and whatever else you want to tell me down in the comments. Thank you all for watching this episode of What to Watch This Weekend, and I will see you in the next one. Goodbye.